discover exciting places to visit, explore your community, learn about new cultures, meet fascinating people, find the exotic. There are hidden treasures wherever you go. Travel, learn, take a day trip in your city, or hike in a rainforest. There's so much to see and share. What are you waiting for? Go on a journey. Welcome to On A Journey. I'm Paul Prado. Make sure to check out each video that goes with our podcast on our YouTube channel, Paul Prado Photography On A Journey. Welcome to Paul Prado Photography On A Journey. And today we're in a beautiful canyon behind Redlands and we are on San Timoteo Canyon Road and we are at the old San Timoteo schoolhouse and we're with school marm. Well I'm Tracy Leck but I play Mary Stevens who was the actual school marm here. And where are we exactly? We're at, currently it's called the San Timoteo Canyon Schoolhouse but at, when it was actually used it was the El Casco Schoolhouse uh, named after the railroad station which is closest. So we are by an open door here and I just discovered that back in the day boys and girls walked in different doors. Right, but this being the frontier, they didn't actually sit in on separate sides of the schoolhouse, especially one year when there was only one girl. <laughs> so in this door here, this is the girls door. This is the girls door. It's been fitted as um, period as we can make it and the boys has all the modern stuff because we need to have a telephone for safety. All right, so let's go take a peek at the girl side. And what do we have here? Um, we have some bonnets. We have some uh, different scarves, which I knit as best I could. Uh, just some different baskets, because the children would have brought their own lunches. There was no lunch service back then. So here we have a backdrop of period desks, uh, a iron cast stove. Yes, yes. So tell us about what we're seeing here for our viewers or listeners. OK, we have uh, these three double desks are original to the schoolhouse. And we know that from two things. One, the uh, San Timoteo Canyon uh, School Committee saved three desks for us. And also, when they were excavating the um, bathrooms, they found pieces that match the iron on these three oh, desks. Nice. The other desks were purchased to put in here to fill out it so that we can actually have uh, 19 to 25 uh, people sitting at a time. Great. So, looking at these desks, there are two seaters. We've got a bench yep. and a table with pencil holder. Is that for like an ink well? Yes, back then they would have used ink wells um, and some of the children would have had pencils as well, depending on their ages and how good they were with ink. So the wood looks like it's got like sections of different woods. Yes. It's like two or yes. three woods. And then the desk itself yeah. is a solid piece. Very solid. And then we've got a bench in the front for... That would be for the first graders who were not expected to know how to read or write yet. Because so you came to school to learn to read and write. Uh -huh. And so they didn't need to have a, a front desk because... They, they didn't couldn't, know anything. Yeah, they, well, they, they, they learned their ABCs and they learned the alphabet first just by Orally. tracing. Oh, okay. Yeah, by listening to the other children. So this front bench is an original. Yes, this that front is an original. Bench, and these three that we're looking at, if you're looking at the video, these three benches, almost like a buckboard bench, right? Um, seated two children, nothing underneath, an inkwell, two pencil holders, and uh, room for two, maybe even three if they're yeah, tiny. Yeah, small children, three, and yeah. that was for more than one reason. One was it was efficient. Right. The other reason was that um, children were supposed to bring their own textbooks. So children and, provided Yeah, them. well, the parents were supposed to provide. And if they didn't have enough, then the children would share. And then where would they get these books? Um, the general store, they would have mailed away from them. And they would have used the McGuffrey Reader. That was in use for more than 75 years. The McGuffrey Reader. Mm -hmm. I have some reproduction McGuffrey Readers. Okay. And then this lesson plan, there's a lesson plan with the actual slate board. Yes. This here? Yes. Let's take a look at this. All right. And this is a sample uh, one. The idea was to work the kids hard in the morning and do what they considered the easier subjects in the afternoon. And then we have... 
So always a morning song. People were very musical back then. If somebody could play the harmonica or the Jeez, harp, fiddle, whatever. anything, they would have brought it in. Then arithmetic, then maxims and discussions. What did they mean? What does a stitch in time saves nine mean? Wow. So on. There was all sorts of things. Then they had a morning recess. Penmanship. Penmanship was very, very important back then because once you came out here, a lot of people never visited their family again. So the only way you could communicate with your family back east. Correspondence, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then um, essay recitation. Uh, so the older grades would actually write essays and they'd have to memorize them and then give them to the other students. Wow. So the other students would learn from the older students. And, and then we have... We have reading, then we have lunch. Uh, children would have been here at the, at the, staying at the schoolhouse to have lunch. Um, unless they lived close enough that they could either ride their horse back uh -huh. or walk back. Wow. And then we have 10 through 14. Yep, and that would be after lunch. They considered botany to be an easier subject. Oh my and goodness. They would, yeah, and they would actually take nature walks, which was very unfortunate because there was one teacher who got a thorn in her finger. She got septicemia and died over the weekend. Oh my goodness. Yeah, because back then... So it was real agrarian here. Penicillin, really, yeah. yeah. Well, they, oh, didn't, they didn't have penicillin. They, right. Sulfa antibiotics might have been around, but mm. maybe not out here. Right. Then, um, current events. The teacher or one of the older pupils would have read from a newspaper if they had one. Or they would have had somebody, you know, talk about what was going on in the world. Uh, then an afternoon song and dismissal. And this is just a sample of what they would have had. Right. Mm -hmm. So for the listeners and the viewers, <clears throat> this is a historic? Yes. Is it registered? Yes, it is. It's a registered historic one-room schoolhouse here in Redlands, Riverside uh, Parks Schoolhouse, the second smallest in Riverside County. Second smallest park. Yep. Oh, nice. It's the only one you can actually visit, though, because the um, one in the, the, naval, the parent naval orange tree, you can only walk around it. They don't want you going in. Well, yeah, you don't have to trample it. But here, you can walk all over the place. You can and then what do we have over here? Over here, on this board, we have the rules. And these are from the time period. However, they would have not been listed um, during the time period because if, if your parents sent you to school, they expected you to learn because um, they were forfeiting your valuable work. Okay. Because children were a valuable part of the workforce. And in this canyon, at any one time, only about a third of the kids came, who were eligible came to school. So back in the late 1800s, and I've talked about this with my teacher friends and students that I know, children were expected to work at home. Yes. But school was like a luxury. They couldn't afford that luxury, and they didn't want to take the child away from the labor that they needed for their ranch or their farm or whatever that they're doing that they need right. the kids. So this space on the slate was needed for teaching and yes, it would you have memorized been for teaching. the rules. Would, I mean, they didn't use a lot of paper back then. Yeah. I mean, uh, I was reading a document from the time period and they said you need to lay in a good supply, goodly supply of uh, paper. Two reams for a year ought to do it. Two years? That's, no, two, two reams. reams. That's a thousand pieces of paper right. for the whole year. Uh, grades were not automatic. The first thing a teacher did when he or she came in was grade the classroom. Every child was tested in English and math and assigned a grade based on what they knew, wow. not their age. You could be 19 years old in third grade. Wow. So what are some of these rules here? Okay, we have respect your schoolmistress. We have do not call your classmates names or fight with them. Never make noises or disturb your neighbors. Be silent during classes. No more than one student at a time may go to the privy. The privy? Yes. And for our viewers and listeners, what is a privy? It's our outhouse, the bathroom. Outhouse, not running water, no. not a sink, no. not little wipies. Nope. An outhouse. Yep. And we have no pictures of that, so luckily we didn't have to rebuild that. <laughs> So we have no, no way of knowing exactly what it looked like. We have a nice modern bathroom here if anyone wants to visit. So I'm sure you can imagine that um, toilet paper was a commodity. So I'm sure they other... They use toilet paper I was going to say. Sears catalog, <laughs> newspapers, corn cobs. Corn cobs. Well, we didn't have electricity here until the 1920s. 
And there you go. So, so we had lanterns if it was going to get yeah. dark. Yeah, no, and school was from 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock roughly. And when it got too dark, they just left early because what else are you going to do? The children need to get home safely. Right. Okay, the stove is original, this part and this. Uh, this is from the time period there would not have been an iron here, but we put it here just because it's from the time period. This part is not original because um, that brought it in storage. This was saved for us also by the Santa Mateo Canyon School Committee. Right now there are coals in there. Okay. Um, You'd use wood or you cow could, chips? You could or? use, uh, not cow chips. <laughs> There's plenty of wood around here. Um, you could use coal, you can use wood. Either one would work just fine. So if uh, you, go ahead. Uh, the children, uh, during the winter, they might bring half-baked potatoes to school, mm -hmm. and then the teacher could put them in the coals and cook them, and then by lunchtime, you'd have a fully baked potato. And if you were rich and you owned a cow, you could have butter. If not, you could have bacon grease. Wow. So here we have a cast iron stove. Coal was used, wood. No cow chips here, no not, cow on, chips. not on the prairie. Yep. And like you heard, you could bring your potato. Could you bring your beef? No. Just the potato. No, uh, there was no refrigeration. Okay. And so you had to bring something that was safe. Okay. So uh, vegetables. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, if you. Maybe cheese. Yeah. You know, but butter, you know, butter bread was good. But again, if you weren't rich, bacon grease. Okay, while we were talking, there was a lot of train noise. If you're listening to the podcast, a lot of train, uh, big giant freight trains going by. Yeah. It's sad to hear the trains go by always. Constantly. And um, she just shared with me something about the trains. Yeah, uh, the trains are what made it possible to have a schoolhouse here because more people came out. You know, you had railroad men, you had uh, people who came out to support the railroad, building the railroad, and then you could also have more agriculture out here because they had a way to ship it safe, Moving your you know, product. much quicker. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so right now we have five, six pictures here yes. that are either from this place or they're period pictures. So are these of this place? Okay, this one, the first one. Can you hold it? Oh, yeah. The first one, um, this is one of the mothers of the students. This is uh, late 20s. And what she did is, uh, since she could drive in a car, she would drive the school, and whatever kids were along the way would get in until they couldn't, and then they just hang on. So this is your school preemptive bus. school bus, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe this is Mrs. Frizzle, we don't know. Uh, no idea. But she's Nobody's got everybody, there's like, Three people with goggles, these nice goggles wow. for, for the spectacles, for the dust. You've got kids in their overalls. You've got kids smartly dressed with their jackets. You've got spoked wheels. Yeah. He's got nicely spoked wheels. So I uh, can zoom in right there. If you're watching the video, if you're listening to the podcast, this is definitely a period picture right. of this area in Riverside County and San Bernardino County and like she just said there's lots of kids walking along the way and we had talked about earlier kids going home by dark so yeah. they get home safely well this lady was like a guardian angel and scooped these kids yep. up to bring them to school yep she dropped them off at whatever wherever you know, she picked them up yeah wherever she picked them up yeah yeah because they lived all up and down the canyon right this is a picture of the schoolhouse from. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Picture of the schoolhouse from the. Again, I believe it's the late twenties. So she's uh, holding a picture of the schoolhouse that we're doing our podcast and YouTube from. This is an original picture from the nineteen twenties. Yeah, they just blew it up so you could see it better. And then we did have the windmill here to help us get the water. Uh, you can see some of the pepper trees. We have one original pepper tree left. The others um, are all new. Mm -hmm. I mean, new being, you know, seven years, but right. still. Right, You know, and it does have a tower for a bell, but it never had a bell. Goodness. No, it just, you know, didn't well, work out. We're lucky that we even have this school. Yeah. 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 And here we have a double picture. It looks like a yeah. maypole. Yes, they used to do maypole um, dances. And then uh, when we had the grand opening, there was a maypole dance, but that's the only one that's been here that I know about. So this pole's gone then? No, uh, that particular pole's gone. There's another one that's out there now. Like, yeah. Yeah. 
So if you're watching the video, we've got kids dancing around the maypole. Uh, you've got adults on the side, and then you've got a group of students up here, I believe, with the school teacher. Is that who that is? is uh, right yes, here? yes. Okay. So you get to see some really good historic pictures. And this gentleman here, uh, he here's a picture, if you're listening to the podcast, of a gentleman looking, staring into the camera. He's got a nice three-piece suit on with a tie, really nice classy look. And this is? Michael Van de Veer. He's from Holland um, with his wife, Frances. Uh, they, uh, they came um, and with her eight children in 1865. Okay. And then he was instrumental in establishing this as a permanent school. Because before we had uh, this schoolhouse, the kids had school wherever somebody donated a building for the school year. Okay. So one year it was somebody's barn, another year it was a three-sided adobe. Wow. Which was so, had, was so poorly uh, furnished that the kids would be sitting on a bench and all of a sudden it would fail, they'd be in the dirt. Oh no. So yeah, he was instrumental in getting this place. So the structure we're in right now, 2017, is yeah. because of this man. Well, uh, he was. He was instrumental in me. Yeah, keeping, instrumental. he wasn't the only one. There right. were more people because so people was, had to do a bond and raise money. Right. So. And yes. his name again is. Michael Van de Veer. Michael Van de Veer. Instrumental. He's from Holland. His wife Frances was from Spain. There we go. There we go. We have a diverse population like we have today. Well, yeah. And this look looks at, like a maypole here. And if you look at the kids, this this school was integrated. There was. Uh, no problem having kids who were mixed Hispanic, race. No, mixed race, I see African Native Americans, American, Native Americans. African American. Yeah. There's about two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, six. About two dozen kids. If you're listening to the podcast, it's a it's the maypole that we saw earlier, but a more pixelated or. Um, it's yeah, the word bigger, we used yeah, to more, use. More, more grainy is the yes, word we used to yes. use. So this is a grainier picture with about two dozen kids uh, stopped for the moment at the Maypole so someone could get a shot. And the diversity of the classroom is just incredible. It's awesome. Uh, you could tell that we have uh, biracial, like she said, African American, American, Native American, and Caucasian kids in there. Here we are in San Bernardino, Riverside counties and just enjoying school because school is important. And like she said earlier, it was a luxury. Um, I'd, rather you ha I'd rather you be at home working, but here we've got these kids actually learning right. and trying to make a better place here. Yeah, make a better life for them and their families. Yeah, yeah. and we have one more picture, one more picture. This is of a, a girl woman. graduate. No, no, she's a girl graduate. It was a big deal, and I do not have her name, sadly. That's okay. But she, it was such a big deal to actually graduate from eighth grade. That was a big deal because most people didn't. Because you not only did you have to go to school the entire time and learn every, the, everything, but you also had to pass a very rigorous test. So the picture we just saw, if you're listening to the podcast, is of a young lady. I'm a 13, 14 years of age maybe. She could be she 16 could be 12 too. Or it 16. just depended. I right. mean, it's hard to tell. So she was a graduate and how did we go about getting this picture? Uh, donated by the family. Wow. So tell me about George Washington okay, here. Okay, uh, these, George Washington and Abraham, the pictures are original to the schoolhouse. Uh, Jerry Cody and his wife in the San Mateo Canyon School Committee saved them and then they presented them to the, to, uh, the Riverside Parks and Recreation um, at the grand opening. And we did have to reglaze them because you can see there's a little bit of uh, sun damage to George especially. And that was because the original glass didn't have any UV protection. So now it does have UV protection, so we don't anticipate any more sun damage. So here we have original pictures from the schoolhouse from back in the day yeah. of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. I'm going to just yeah. pan over there real quick. Yeah, they're uh, probably actually uh, engravings. I don't think they're pictures of the paintings. I think they're engravings of the paintings. Okay. But whatever it is, it's original, you know, but now it's been preserved as best they can. So this is one of the um, original slates. Uh, one of the Frink boys, his family donated it, and it has his birth date on there, and he was a student here. And we have a story, actually, from him. 
and that uh, back then, if you didn't do your, your homework, you didn't memorize your lines, uh, the teacher would beat you. Okay. But the teacher they had that particular year was very, had a very bad temper, uh -huh. and uh, they, he would beat everybody in the class. Okay, this is whether but, you need it or not. But since this boy was the youngest, he got the least of the beatings. So this, if you're listening to the podcast, you just heard this is a student, an actual student that was here at the San Mateo Schoolhouse. The etching on the top for those that are listening to the podcast is W.H. Frank, July 3rd, 1880. Incredible yeah. that we have this wonderful artifact here of history. So you could come here and see replicas of uh, period pieces uh, of the time, the late, 18, late 1800s, early 1900s, but then you could come in here and actually see George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, the uh, stove over there, and an actual student's slate. Yeah, um, for those the time that, period. Yeah. For, for those that don't know, a slate is a chalkboard, because I know a lot of us have whiteboards, and you use your vis-a-vis -vis and all these other markers, uh, your hand was your vis-a-vis. -vis. You wiped whatever you were learning, you had to rewrite it, you wipe it, you relearn, and you wiped it, and this is your iPad. Yep. This was your iPad because yep. your eyes had to look at the pad and then you erase right. it. Right, because they would use this over paper, and it has a hook because it would go on the kids, um, each kid would have their own hook in the cloakroom. Uh -huh. And so they would hang that on there if they didn't need it to, for their homework that night. Wow. We've come a long way. This is from a Riverside County Grammar School meet. Uh, Leonard Gonzalez, his father, I want to say, uh, was actually a student in the district. And this is from uh, the time period. Um, if you look at it, I think that, yeah, 1923. So these are real ribbons, artifacts from the time period donated by Leonard Gonzalez. Leonard Gonzalez, Riverside County Grammar School Festival and Field Meet, yep. Beaumont, California, 1923. Right. This is awesome. Okay, these are the school desk fragments that when they were excavating from the bathroom, they found them. So we can match them up to the three uh, original school desks and you can see that the iron patterns match. And that was found when we were digging for the latrine. So these are desk fragments, as she said, yeah. and they did a little CSI work to match yeah. what they have here. I can't really read the inscription there. No, I can't read it either. But I'm panning it for the YouTube, for the video, and you can see that it's really, really old. It's extremely rusty. Uh, they don't know exactly where the fragments fit on the desk. Well, we can match them up, but yeah. I mean, we can't do it right here and now. Right. And then we have some other artifacts. They found the drinking faucet knob, and they found a horseshoe, because some children rode their horses to school. So it says, Drinking Faucet, Berkeley, California. Yep. February 1911. I think that's what that says. I think Patent you're right. February. Yep. And a horseshoe because we didn't have scooters and no. razor scooters, we actually had children riding horses. And then we also, when they also, when they excavated for the, uh, for the bathrooms and for during construction, they found marbles. So these are marbles from the time period that fell out of some poor kids' um, yeah. pocket when they were using the uh, privy. And then these pieces here? That's more pieces of the, of the four from, those are four desk fragments, uh -huh. more desk fragments that they found. You can, you can match them up if you want to take the time. And then we have ink wells. Yes, and those were purchased from a local um, antique store. So okay. they're not original That's to okay. Site. So if you are watching the video or listening to the podcast, we've got about a eight, nine ink wells that the children used. They didn't have pens lead pencils, they didn't have markers or whatever. They actually had to use, and then these are the pens? Those are the, those are the, the nibs. The because nibs. Because if you look at it, um, okay. you can see right here, there, you would dip it in and a little bit of ink would be held on this and you would write a couple of words and then you'd dip it again. So in this cabinet here, you can see the artifacts that they have of the period and actual 
pieces of history right here in Redlands, Riverside Park's cabinet. Yep. Fragments, marbles, horseshoe, water faucet knob, yeah. and we have a spike down here. Yeah, because the railroad was around here. So there's, there's a spike that they found that could have just been left over. We, we don't know, but they found it when they were doing the, the construction. Well, we've had a great adventure today here at the San Timoteo Schoolhouse with Tracy Leck, school marm, and you represent, what's her name? Mary Stevens. Mary Stevens from the late 1800s to the kind of 1923. Uh, it was opened as a schoolhouse till uh, 1937. 1937. We've discovered a lot of great things in here at the border of Beaumont, Redlands on San Timoteo Canyon Road. It's a historic place. There's a sign out front that says San Timoteo Schoolhouse. Um, we saw original artifacts, we saw period pieces, we learned how the kids acted and learned and the teachers, how they disciplined and the things that these kids had to memorize, how they used a single slate, a single chalkboard, not a whiteboard, not an iPad, not a smartphone, to memorize the things that they had to do for uh, reading, writing, math, uh, three R's. Um, I never knew why R was arithmetic. Right there, it's already a mistake. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, schoolhouse itself, you could come here every first and third Saturday of each month from 10 to 2. And you'll see this school marm, yep. and she'll be glad to show you around, show you the actual artifacts, show you the period pieces, the cast iron stove, and they've got books in there that tells you about one room schoolhouses. You had kids here in Redlands, Riverside, Beaumont, Banning, this whole area, coming here either walking or on horseback, and then you saw the gal who would pick up kids with her car that had spoked, spoked wheels. This is a brochure. I've got it upside down. And it's Riverside County Regional Park and Open Space District. 1-800-234-7275. Uh, Check this place out, especially if you're banning Beaumont, Redlands, uh, even Riverside, if you want to take the little jaunt down the road. You can hear the train coming again. Yep. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, we got a nice trailer, fifth wheel, cruising on by down here at Santiam Road. Get yourself out on a journey, go hiking, discover history, and thanks for listening. Bye.